All right, now we are ready to drop our engine into the car. You can rotate the chain, but that's about the best you're gonna do. Just be sure when you sling your chain that the motor doesn't flip around 180 on you from its own tension. Uh, as you can see, we have our chain mounted here to the pitch bar bolt, and we have just enough slack on it to clear the intake boot, and then have the other end connected to the bracket on the power steering pump. Uh, otherwise, if you have too much slack in your chain, you're going to run out of jack before you can get the motor over the front of the car. Now as we go down with our motor, uh, we're going to pay attention to the angle at which it's going to meet against the bell housing. You will need to kind of fight and tug and wiggle around, pitch up and down as you go, move in and out to get the motor in position. And what you want to do is line up the bottom studs. Once you get the bottom studs lined up, you can uh, adjust your slack on your chain and pitch and everything to get the motor to seat with the bell housing and get your pilot shaft lined up, which sometimes can be a pain in the ass with these. Uh, if you have issues getting the pilot shaft to line up, you can take your 7-8 uh, your socket and rotate the crank a little bit to get the splines to, to mesh together. Now to get the motor done in the car, I'm going to have it kind of out and back a little bit. You are going to have to kind of hold it around by hand and move it around things like the, uh, the air box, power steering lines, and the uh, air conditioning assembly as you go down. Once you get her more into place, then you can pull it out and get your studs going. Having two people can help as far as help spotting and seeing, especially if one guy mans the engine and the other guy mans the crane, but if you've done this enough times, you can easily do it by yourself if, if you're familiar with, you know, if you basically make routine out of it. Uh, with this engine, I made mention before off camera that a lot of times if you swap an engine or transmission, you have, you know, a motor that's not original to the transmission it's going to, you'll notice the dowel pins. Sometimes they'll come out and stick with the engine or the transmission. In our case, we had one dowel pin on the engine and the other one was pulled out with the last transmission. So I drove this dowel pin in here, it'll match up. Sometimes you'll have a dowel on either side and you won't realize it until you uh, start going together. But if that's the case, you can uh, take your uh, 3 16 drift punch and knock the extra dowel out if you do end up having two dowels trying to go together. So I have the engine now on the bottom studs. And this is this is the tricky part, getting all this to line up. Because uh, otherwise, if you try drawing, you're drawing it up with the bolts, you run the risk of binding stuff up, especially if your pilot shaft is not in line. So I just wiggle this, and now the pilot shaft feels like it's going on, but the clutch splines are having a little fitment issue. So this is the part where I'm gonna make a crank rotation to get that to sink on the rest of the way. But once you have it on this far, what I always like to do is uh, thread on a nut on the bottom stud. Uh, sometimes you're only gonna have just enough thread to get the, um, the nut on without the washer. And then once you get everything drawn together, then you can back the nut out and put the appropriate washers in place. Uh, with these, you are going to have from the factory a flat washer on the back of your nut. And we can thread this on here. And it looks like I'll have most of enough room for my bell housing bolt. Now, you want to be careful about your orientation of your bolt. The bolt is going to go in from the back side. Say for example we drop this motor in here with the intake off, it's too easy to assume the bolt will go in from the front, but then when you go to pull the motor the next time, your bolt's going to run into shit before you can get it out, and you'll end up having to pull the intake off just to pull the motor. So the bolts go in from the back side, and right now we don't quite have enough thread to draw that on, so the, what to accomplish here is to get the bottom studs drawn in to draw the bell housing together enough put the top bolts in. Uh, I do have the, uh, forgot to show you this, but I do have the transmission on a jack to raise it up 
about two or three inches from the cross member to allow us to slide the motor on without it running into the cross member where it's mounts go. Once we have the motor and transmission uh, mated together, then we can lower the jack and release the crane to set the motor mount studs into their holes. Um, but while you have it up in the air, it is much easier to get to the bottom of the bell housing nuts with the whole thing jacked up first. So I like to torque up my bell housing entirely first and then let the motor rest down into its slot. All right, I have of myself here a 3 8 drive ratchet with a short, or short socket. If you get in there with a deep well or an extension, you're gonna run into the axle and that'll be in your way. Otherwise, uh, just a regular box end wrench will do you just as good too. But as we start to draw this together, we see that our, um, our dowel pins are lined up and the bell housing is starting to draw together. Now, the thing you wanna look for is you wanna make sure the draw bell housing draws together evenly on both sides, because otherwise it's possible to draw the one side together and the other side's not gonna to wanna to go together. So as you draw together, go back and forth between each side to draw it up evenly. And the idea is to draw the bottom up enough that you can get one of the top bolts through. And once you have those through, then you can go ahead and draw it on the rest of the way. Okay, now I have my bottom, nut in place. I want to give the motor a wiggle to make sure that it's not binding in anything. It should be able to slide on there a little bit so I'm gonna have to give her a little bit of crank rotation. And also the, uh, the angle of your chain has a lot to do with this also with your uh, how far up or down your crane is to get that. Now it feels to me I am having a little bit of a bind here, which if that's the case, uh, you want to back the, uh, the nuts out a little bit. And you don't have to take them off, just back them out enough that the belt housing can draw on evenly, because otherwise if you're trying to draw it on at this angle, the uh, pilot shaft is going to have a hard time finding its hole. Now this bolt here, if you're looking at it, this is the bolt that goes to this side, and this is the bolt that goes on the starter side. It is longer, but you can also use that to draw this thing together too. But once you draw it together, you're going to have to take it out and put it on the other side. So now we see that the top of our bell housing is drawing up, and we can see that it is drawing up evenly all the way across. If it were only drawing it on this side and not the other side, then you still have a alignment issue that you'd have to do like we just did to get that to continue to line up. As you can see, it's a little tight on this dowel pin because it is foreign to this car, but that'll, that'll draw together once you apply your torque evenly all the way around. But there you can see our bell housing is drawn together quite nicely. Now I'm just turning this bolt down for the sake of drawing it together. I can go ahead and torque up the bottom. Once I have the bottom torqued up, then I'll uh, put the appropriate bolt back in its place there and uh, install this one on the other side with the starter. You don't want to go too crazy He-Man torque on these. Just a uh, snug and a quarter turn is generally what it takes. There we are. Now we have our bell housing entirely bolted up. I've put the uh, bolt here that is supposed to be here. And if you notice, the starter bolt is considerably longer than what it looks like it should be. And that is because uh, this bolt is original to the automatic transmission, which has a thicker bell housing back here. The other thing to note here is on the starter, uh, the ground cable is, is bolted to a bracket that slips, the bolt slips through. The bracket serves as a washer, so when you uh, put your starter in, you're going to line up that bracket to the hole and put the bolt through both the bracket and the bell housing to establish your ground for the starter.